lie, there are some pretty crazy animals out there. Like a liger, a cross between a lion and a tiger. Or a llama and a camel. A camma. But some people have gone way too far with crossbreeding animals together, and that's what we will be looking at today. From human-monkey hybrids to pig-human hybrids. Let's talk about these and more only in today's video. Top 10 dark crossbreeding experiments. But before we begin, Lindsay has some very exciting news to share with you all. Yes, I do. So I have started my very own reaction channel called Peach. It's gonna be a really fun channel and you'll get to know me more personally. It'll be great. So why don't you guys head on over to Peach and subscribe. Videos coming soon. And now on with the video. Starting off this countdown, we have the human monkey hybrid. Guys, I wish this was fake, but it's not. So scientists are currently trying to make human monkey hybrids. They have high hopes that these experiments will succeed because monkeys and humans are similar genetically. Spanish biologist Juan Carlos Belmonte is working with monkey researchers in China to perform these experiments. So basically they are mixing human cells into monkey embryos. Their objective is to grow a monkey whose organs are completely made out of human cells. They then would use these animals and their organs for people that need the organs. Of course, this is controversial in a number of ways, as you can imagine. In our number nine spot today, we have bees. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. A lot of us know bees is pretty harmless and kind of cute little pollinators, unless of course you're allergic or terrified, but truthfully, bees normally do a lot more good than harm. That was of course until an experience experiment in the 70s went awry and caused a new crossbred bee. This experiment was to take a regular honeybee and breed it with a bee that was found in Africa that produces a lot more honey, and of course the goal was to produce a manageable bee that would also be able to provide more honey than a regular honeybee would. Well, the bees that came out were a lot less manageable and they didn't even make more honey. After this experiment ended, however, the bees got out into the environment and the 80s saw the beginning of the trouble. These bees are not only aggressive towards other kinds of bees, which which creates a huge problem, but they're also very aggressive towards humans. And when these bees sting, their stinger stays with them so they can sting multiple times. Victims of these swarms receive 10 times as many stings as regular swarms, they react to disturbances 10 times faster, and they will also chase the disturbance a quarter of a mile. These bees have actually caused at least 1,000 deaths, so it's safe to say that this is one experiment gone horribly wrong. Moving on, at number eight, we have the pig human hybrid. Again, you heard me correctly. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human pig hybrid. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then it was taken out and analyzed and the embryo survived and contained some human cells. So their hope is to grow human organs inside of pigs instead of waiting for a donor. Similar to the tests that are being done on the monkeys as I previously mentioned. No animals are safe at this point. In our number seven spot today, we have the wolfin. I wish I never had to say the word wolfin, but unfortunately they do exist. These guys are created when a female common bottlenose dolphin is bred with a male false killer whale. They're extremely rare and have been found in the wild, but unfortunately most of the ones that have existed were bred in captivity. The first recorded wolfin was born at the Tokyo Sea World in 1981, and he very sadly died just 200 days later. Probably a prime example of why they really maybe shouldn't even exist in the first place. The first that was born in the United States that actually miraculously survived was at a sea life park in Hawaii in May of 1985. She ended up having three babies. The first passed away after a few days. The second passed away at the age of nine, but thankfully the third one is still living. In March of last year, both her and her daughter are still alive, but they still remain in captivity. Coming in at number six, we have Ilya Ivanich Ivanov. What a name. But this is the name of the dude that originally tried to create a human chimp hybrid. Ilya was a Russian biologist who did a number of disturbing experiments in the 1920s. He started with crossbreeding animals. So he managed to produce a zebra donkey hybrid, a Z-donk, and a bison cow cross, which is a Zubron, and also crossed rats, mice, guinea pigs, and rabbits together with each other. But he decided to take it further with the human and monkey crossing. In fact, he successfully managed 
managed to inseminate three female chimpanzees with human sperm. His experiments were so famous that five women actually offered to carry half ape babies inside of them in the name of science, which thankfully didn't go through. Or if it did, he did it in private with no one else knowing. In our number five spot today, we have farm cattle. In the 1990s, farmers in India were told that if they crossbred their cattle, they'd be able to breed cattle that could produce more milk, which would of course mean more money for them and their families. This should be amazing and great, right? Well, considering why we're all here today, I think we all know the answer to that question. Different breeds of bulls were brought in and farmers were expecting great things, but they ended up being stuck with cattle that did produce more milk, but also needed way more higher quality food or else they'd stop producing more milk. And they were less resistant to the local diseases, so they required more veterinary visits. So it's this kind of situation like, yes, they are producing more milk, which will get us some more money, but they also cost us more. And truthfully, most of the times the increased milk production did not outweigh the growing costs. In our fourth spot, we have Hiromitsu Nakuchi. Hiromitsu is a stem cell biologist from Tokyo. Just recently, his experiments have been approved by the government. And let me tell you what he's planning on doing. Basically, he hopes to grow human cells in mice and rats, and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. So again, another experiment having to do with growing human cells in animals. So his experiments started by injecting some cells into rat and mice embryos. But those rodents have been genetically manipulated so they can't make a pancreas for themselves. But his hope is that the rodents' bodies will use the human cells to then make a pancreas for themselves. Here's the thing. While conducting the experiments, if they find that the rats are starting to develop a human-type brain, then they have to stop the experiments on them. It's part of the agreement that he has with the government. They don't want a humanized animal coming into existence. In our number three spot today, we have the beefalo. Okay, so beefalo sounds kind of cute and silly and it also looks pretty normal, so what could be wrong with this one? Well, let's start at the beginning. So, a guy named Charles Buffalo Jones started breeding them in 1906 because the bison population in Arizona at the time was so exceptionally low. So, bison were bred with domestic cattle in order to produce a hardy commercial animal. He ended up just giving up on this and released the animals who were then managed by the state and the number remain relatively low because of the limited hunting licenses. Well, when the beefalo found their way into a national park where hunting is banned and there aren't any natural predators, the population began to grow by 50% a year. That's wild! So none of this is necessarily bad, but it's the animal's environmental impact that is really the trouble. First off, they're very thirsty animals and can consume 10 gallons each per trip to a watering hole. So they can obviously clear up a water source pretty quickly. Not to mention the fact that they do their business in the water and how their heavy weight compacts the soil. So basically, they have thrown the ecosystem off balance and have pushed out other animals and the insects and plant life around have also been affected. In our second spot, we have the breeding gone wrong. If you're a dog lover like Olivia and I, then this story is going to make you upset. In 2010, a woman named Julie Leroy was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy said she didn't want to keep her. When Julie saw the dog, she was in complete disbelief. The dog had a squished body, huge jaw, a bad underbite, and was oddly shaped. That's because the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. That's because they got the dog from a backyard breeder who was carelessly breeding a bunch of his dogs together. Thankfully, Julie took the dog in and gave her a loving home. But it's sad to see dogs born like this just from reckless people who only have money on their mind. In our number one spot today, we have lions. In the 1980s, the Chapier Zoo in India started an experimental program where they would breed together a domestic lion, which is a bit smaller and has a less shaggy mane, with an African lion in the hopes that they could be introduced to the wild and help with the dwindling population of wild lions in India. The zoo found two African lions that were being used in a circus and brought them in to breed with their two Asiatic lions. When the cubs were born, it was clear that this was already a mistake as the cubs had severely weak back legs. They were having extreme trouble walking and as they got older, their immune systems started to fail. By 2000, when they had already bred 
bred more than 70 of these hybrid lions, they finally decided to stop the program and all of the males were given vasectomies in order to stop any reproduction. There are laws that prohibit them from killing animals, so they were simply just waiting for them to die naturally. When there's a dwindling population of lions, it's insane to me that they wasted 20 years trying to do this when they could have just simply bred the lions that they had. Thank you guys so much for checking out our list today. Let me know in the comments below which one of these experiments freaked you out the most. I've been your host, Olivia Kozlovsky. And I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan. And I'll see you next time. And I'll see you when I see ya. Bye!